Greetings and salutations, people of the internet. Austin here. After a lot of hard work, time, and headaches, I have finally completed all 24 initial mega evolutions from the first six fake mon regions I've covered on this channel as part of my 250 sub celebration. Maybe I'll have more success with people voting at 500 or 1,000 subs. Anyway, this script is going to be a bit different compared to my other ones, as I'm writing each entry as I work on them, opposed to writing it all once I finish. I'll timestamp each region in the description so you can jump to whatever one interests you the most. Uh, without further ado, let's get started. Mega Smite the S'more Pokemon. For this design, I wanted this Pokemon to have a warrior slash barbarian king vibe, opposed to the Valiant Knight, a regular Smite. I turned the Graham Cracker Shield into an axe blade at the end of their spear, with a bite taken out of it for some visual flair. I added some Graham Cracker Pauldrons, a Graham Cracker Loincloth, and a Graham Cracker Crown surrounding the flame on the top of their head. Along parts of the body, I added a char to look like burnt marshmallow to help break up the color scheme. Uh, lastly, I gave this Pokemon a big old chocolate beard and cape to feel more regal and a little bit disheveled. I initially had the rest of the cracker armor look like the axe shape-wise, but it cluttered the design so I went with the straight crackers for the majority of the design. This was a great start for these Mega Evolutions. Mega Sandinian Persian, the feral cat Pokemon. Yeesh, that's a mouthful. So for this menace from the region down under, I wanted this Pokemon to feel like a gang leader. I know everyone hates it when it happens, but I made it bipedal to showcase this easier and make the Mega feel more impactful. I gave it a fur duster jacket, I opened up its scarred eye, which is still blind, FYI, and I made the whiskers bigger. The claws got majorly increased in size, and I cut off the end of the tail to show some more battle damage to help reflect the dark fighting type it now boasts. I went through three passes to get this des current design that you see. With this essentially being a middle ground between the first two attempts, and then just reposing it for the final render. Added more jewels across the body to make this thing feel like a dripped out gang leader, and to help break up the colors. I don't think this is going to be the strongest of my mega designs, but I do like how it came out. Mega Tomb Trio, the Graveyard Pokemon. This is one of the first ideas I came up with when I had to pick my own candidates for Mega Evolution, making this Pokemon a mausoleum surrounded by tombstones. <clears throat> The design itself is pretty simple in comparison to the previous ones, only making the central body into the mausoleum. I had the door be open with numerous eyes looking out from the darkness to give this design a focal point and to make it spookier. I added more tombstones around the main body to really exaggerate the excess that comes with most mega evolutions. As far as changes, I had to make during the design process, I had to extend the mausoleum a bit more since it was on the skinny side. Other than that, this has been the easiest Mega thus far. I will be shocked if another Mega beats this as my personal favorite. Mega Doll Filter, the Purifier Pokemon. This was easily the simplest Mega evolution of the Sendine Bunch, even more so than with Tomb Trio. The main draw of the design is the psychic whirlpool from the dome on their forehead. It was a suggestion to make the head bigger in this design, and I'm really glad I listened. It really helps the pseudo supervillain vibe this Pokemon has. It's gonna clean up the oceans, even if it has to destroy a few boats or people in the process. The psychic whirlpool being made out of small psychic fish was a suggestion I got when I was doing the rough colors, and it really helped give the design and lore more of an interesting spin, pun intended. So I made these swirly bits on the outside vaguely shaped like fish and dolphins. The colors weren't too much trouble, and the whirlpool took the most time when it came to getting the uh, textures down, but it wasn't too bad. One region down, five to go. 
Mega Raitama, the Volt Roller Pokemon. For this Mega Evolution, I made it nice and simple compared to what I've done and what I'm going to do past this point. I designed it around a Glyptodon, an ancient armadillo-like species. I made the Pokemon bigger and brought it down on all fours as a quadruped. I made the armor more segmented with a few cheek-like pouches spotted around the body, mainly on the middle of the shell. I gave it more defined toes slash claws, and for the main draw, I added an electric mace slash tesla coil at the end of the tail to be their main weapon in battle. I added the orange to break up the colors, and I just like adding orange on my electric types. Not a whole lot to say with this one, so we're moving on. Mega Coilitter, the Toxic Surprise Pokemon. This is another Pokemon I had a plan for going into this project. I knew I wanted to go full Dumpster Hydra. For the most part, I had no real issues with this design. The only major change was having the toxic waste overflow from the dumpster and to replace the Mega Evolution symbol and graffiti with to the poster taped on to the dumpster you see currently. I changed the shade of green across the design to feel more toxic and less dirty. I made it a poison dragon type to make it feel more unique. And I just thought that was a fun type combination. I think I will be hard pressed to design a mega better than this one, but only time will tell. Mega Opossle, the Astral Vermin Pokemon. And the award for the easiest mega evolution goes to Mega Opossle. I was given a lot of suggestions when I was brainstorming ideas for mega evolutions, and I ended up combining a few of them with this particular design. The soul has revolted against the body and now puppeteers the lifeless corpse that used to treat it like a meat shield in battle. So, the soul is now connected to the tail as it floats around the body, the spectral puppet strings connected to the hands of Apostle below. I changed the color of the face and tail to a darker gray to feel more dead overall. Uh, lastly, I made the soul an angry red color to showcase its fury and set it apart from the light blue of the original. Mega Albafean Miltank, the Space Cow Pokemon. I'll be honest with you, I had no ideas for this Pokemon going into this project, and I was desperate for some good ideas. So, I went on the Subjectively Discord, as I always do, and I looked for help. Someone threw out the idea of Moon Cheese for this Mega Evolution. I was hesitant, but I had no better ideas, so I ran with it. Somehow, this design is so stupid, it turned around and became awesome. For starters, I made Miltank's horns more of an overt crescent moon shape and changed their color alongside the hooves and added the little star emblem on their chest. This thing is riding a giant cheese wheel to play into the old myth of the moon being made out of cheese, in addition to playing in with the space theme this regional variant already had going in. I added blocks of cheese orbiting mill tank with a comet trail behind them for some visual flair. Add on to the potential cow jumping over the moon reference with this design unintentionally, and somehow the dumbest design has the most going on. Two down, four to go. Mega Manchettis, the Stalker Pokemon. So for this Mega, I had to go full Jason X for the design, and as such, I made it a Bug Steel type to reflect that. This design went through a lot of back and forth design concepts until a constant source of help suggested a sketch of theirs, and this design was born. They suggested I go full robot slash cyborg with the design instead of the half and half I had been trying and failing to get to look good. As usual, they were right, and this design feels a lot cleaner while I still getting the overall vibe that I wanted. The X-shaped wings were their suggestion, but I did change the shape of them a tad to help draw in the eye. This is a really good start to the Vanek section of these Mega Evolutions. Mega Hunchbell, the Ringing Crab Pokemon. The idea for this one was fairly simple. Turn the bell shell on the back into a club to smack their opponents into the upper atmosphere. 
That leans more into the Hunchback of Notre Dame inspiration for this one with the massive hump back it has here. I made it more top heavy to really show off the gains this Pokemon got while giving it some more visible legs compared to the original version. I gave it some random spikes later on since the design wasn't different enough and a lot of Mega Pokemon just kind of have random shit thrown on them at times, so I thought it worked. I also added the Cowbell from Crab Bell as a hat slash helmet to help tie the entire line together. I think it works pretty well. Mega UFO, the unidentified Pokemon. For this Mega Evolution, I wanted to turn UFO into an alien mothership as this Pokemon goes full conqueror when Mega Evolving. The head and face took the longest time to get right. Nothing looked good no matter what I tried, but I got a suggestion from a friend, the same person who suggested the collar and the lighting you see now, and it finally clicked. I noticed a lot of Fakemon artists use tractor beam tentacles for their alien design, so I wanted to try something different. I had the tractor arm beams be connected to two tiny little UFOs flanking the main body. I love how this design came out. This is easily the best of the Mega Evolutions from the Vanek region batch. Mega Surpool, the fake clown Pokemon. I modeled this Mega after the giant clown boss from the end of Killer Clowns from Outer Space, as well as Jack in the Boxes that the baby clowns pop out of. I made this thing swoon since the boss clown was jacked. Uh, I can't, tried to keep the colors and patterns from getting too out of control despite how much of an eyesore this Pokemon already is. I gave it a slightly more defined jaw and boxing gloves from the biker scene of the movie to help this Pokemon feel like a bruiser. I wanted the Jack in the Box to be super tiny, so the sheer ridiculousness of it popping out of there was amplified. This is probably the weakest Mega Vanek design, but it's a solid one nonetheless. Three down, three to go. Mega Blair Wing, the Flute Beak Pokemon. I'll be real, the pan flute shaped wings were the only major design element I had for this Mega going into the design process. Everything else was basically just exaggerating what was already there. I shrank the legs a bit and made the tail feathers bigger and shaped them like flutes to keep the music theme going. I added the little beard to complete the much bigger mustache and I made the feathers in the back just larger for some visual flair. Uh, I decided to brighten up the orange, and I added the blue to make the design pop. I think that was a really good decision right there. Uh, this is not the best Mega to probably start off the Amlop section, but I'm glad I did. I originally had a Mothster in this spot, but I changed it because I didn't want to have an overabundance of Dragon types. So if I do another batch of Mega Evolutions at 500 subs, I'll probably do it then if no one votes that time as well. Mega Temguin, the Regulator Pokemon. The name of the game with this Mega was showcasing more of the fire typing since the base design is predominantly ice coated. I made this Pokemon more slender like actual penguins and I added some rock hopper penguin eyebrows into the mix, naturally making them flame shaped. I made a thermometer stomach more molten color to really show off the heat this Pokemon is generating, with the icy cover resembling a thermometer. I added the fur collar just for vibes, honestly. I thought it looked cool, so I threw it on the design. The ice claws on the feet were something I added after someone did a concept sketch of the vague description for what I was going to do with this Pokemon before I had even done the first draft. I thought it looked cool, so I kept that from there with their permission. Uh, the design actually took more than a few adjustments to get right. Some things I actually had to scrap entirely from the design, but it works well enough as is. Mega Ren Zappos, the burnt out Pokemon. This was probably the easiest Mega of this batch to design. I wanted this Pokemon to regain the energy it had in this first stage with the coffee known as Infinity Energy. 
Now it's overflowing with powers. So I change it to an electric flying type as it takes to the skies to burn off the excess energy. I made the tail feathers into two streaks of lightning flowing behind the Pokemon. I thought that looked cool. I added more green across the board, mainly to the stomach and feet. And I made the beak more overtly lightning bolt themed and slightly changed the shape of the eye mask. I made the lightning bolt feather thing on the crest much longer just to break up the silhouette. Uh, this doesn't change a whole lot, admittingly, but not all Megas are created equal in that department. Mega Sand Shield, the Armored Mouse Pokemon. With this one, I really wanted to lean into the rivalry with Dragon types this Pokemon has. To remind some of you, Sand Slash evolves into Sand Shield once it beats three Dragon types in battle. So, naturally, I made this Pokemon more of a knight to fend off their scaly adversaries. I made it even bulkier with bigger quills on the back and head. I massively bulked up the arms and turned them into shields with the claws at the end, making up the tip of the uh, shield. I made the stomach have a pattern on it. If just to make it look a little bit more armored and defensive. And lastly, I added a sword at the end of the tail just to complete the overall theme. After all, any good knight needs a sword. Lastly, I gave this Pokemon Dragon Slayer for its ability. It was too perfect not to use, and it comes from the same region, so I thought it fit. Four regions down, two to go. Mega Sawtile, the Buzzsaw Pokemon. Uh, fun fact, this was originally a concept I had for a normal evolution for Sawtile, but that, upon reflection, actually worked better for a Mega. Don't worry, I got something crazier in mind now for an actual evolution. Now, for this design, I wanted to go full Dimetrodon for the body, with a buzzsaw sail on top as the focal point of the design. I added the little head crest after the fact since I thought the head felt empty, and it, it just looks cool, so that cinched it. I made the legs longer and the torso a lot thicker to support the saw on the back. Otherwise, this is a very simple Mega Evolution. I created Buzzsaw as a hidden ability to give this thing a very niche place in battles as an screen destroyer. Mega Obaspike, the Thorn Tower Pokemon. Another fairly simple Mega Evolution. Seems to be a pattern with the Curiamon so far. I mainly wanted this Pokemon to be taller and more spread out than the original version, so I added the arm slash offshoots on both sides of the body, adding more heads along the way. I made the legs bigger overall, mainly the ones in the back, and shattered most of the pot that made up the lower body on the original design. I made the central red a lot darker to feel more imposing, and the fact I don't like the shade of red I chose for the original design looking back on it. Overall, I made the colors a lot more vibrant since the original color palette was just too damn muted for my taste. Solid Mega Evolution. Mega Thundle, the Cloud Fur Pokemon. Continuing on the train of simple Mega Evolutions, for Thundle here, I turned its fur into literal storm clouds. This was one of the first Pokemon I had an idea for going into this project. The real hurdle was finding a secondary typing for this Pokemon, since every other Mega I did was dual typed, and I didn't want this one to be the odd man out. I knew I didn't want it to be flying, since that was too easy and someone suggested ice, and the rest was history. The only real changes I had to make from my initial rough draft was making the torso longer, adding a little diamond pattern on the sides, and just making the clouds more interesting shape-wise. I really do love how this mega design came out. This is one of my favorites, despite how simple it is. Mega Vahasian Dugong, the spirit oil Pokemon. For this one, I leaned into the candle aspect of the original's design considering how Caribbean monk seals were forced into extinction partially due to them being hunted for their fat since it was used to make lantern slash candles. 
I made the tail into a candelabra with spectral flames at the end. The biggest change from the first draft was making this more of a walrus, since the original didn't change enough from the non-mega design. I made the horn and tusks a lot bigger with a flame on top of the head just for some visual flair. The spectral mustache was made a lot bigger here and it covers the entire snout. I shrank the front fins a bit and I added the back ones to help eliminate some of the negative space I had on the lower body. This is a pretty good wrap up for the curious section. Five down, one to go. Mega K-Share, the warning system Pokemon. Bigger and Badder was the name of the game with this Mega Pokemon. I knew I wanted the ears slash tree to be the focal point of this Mega, so I massively increased their size so they dwarfed the body almost. I initially gave it a bush cloak to wear around its body, but I changed it to the tall grass you'd see on the savanna after some feedback. A friend on Discord suggested the twisting ear branches, and they were such a good idea. Oh my god, I was so mad I didn't think of that. They add a lot to the design. I also gave the design some spikes here and there to play on, the thorns that grow on acacia trees, and the random spikes that appear on some Mega Pokemon. Looking at you, Garchomp. Mega Pengaball, the Ultra Shell Pokemon. Another Pokemon who I had an immediate idea for when planning out the Mega Evolutions. Since the original was an Ultra Ball, the only place to go for the Mega was turn it into a Master Ball. This took two tries to get right. The second one was mainly changing the pose and the flow of the body, so it didn't step on Mega Sand Shield's toes. Once again, I got help from the Subjectively Discord, and that cannot be underestimated how much they contributed to this design. Once I got the design in a good place, the rest was easy. The M on the forehead did give me a little bit of trouble, but I got it there eventually. I love the spikes coming out of the tail. It feels like a natural thing to do with the original design kept in mind. Mega Chara, the overheating Pokemon. I am speed, was my design philosophy with this Mega. I bulked up the back legs as I wanted them to be the main change proportion-wise with this design. I changed up the color scheme and patterns a bit, removing a lot of the spots on the body to make it more readable. I had the idea of the jet booster legs from the beginning, but another person suggested the exhaust pipes on the legs, as well as the jet booster tail. God, that was such a raw idea on their part. I decided to have the inside of the spots and ears glow when this Pokemon starts firing up. I thought that would be a really fun design detail here and in a hypothetical game. This is definitely my favorite Mega of the Xenia group. Mega Camelvan, the Desert Trek Pokemon. With this Mega, I wanted to lean fully into the Desert Caravan motif this Pokemon has. I added the rain slash beard to the jaw to make the silhouette more interesting, as well just for some color balancing purposes. I massively increased the hump size to look like a bunch of saddles slash bags piled up on its back. I made the hair a lot longer on the head to keep this Pokemon cool in the desert, and I just thought it was fun. I changed up the color scheme here and there, mainly in the face and legs, and I added the red for contrast when combined with the existing black on the color scheme. This one didn't give me a whole lot of trouble, and it was a really fun way to end out the Xenia section. Six out of six regions complete. With that, we conclude this batch of Mega Evolutions on the channel. Next time I'll be doing this will be at 500 subscribers, and I might forgo trying to get y'all to vote, and I might just choose them again myself. I don't know, that'll be future Austin's problem. This was actually a lot of fun to do, getting out of my comfort zone and trying something I hadn't done in a really long time. Down below, let me know what your favorite Mega Evolution from each group was. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's video and want to see more in the future. 
to end off the year, we're going to go back in time and roast the ever-loving hell out of the original version of the Sendine region. This is Austin, signing out. <laughs>